per electron. So she's at right at eight and a half. Okay. And then you can add an inch for it to come up a little bit more on the lateral side here. We're not going to be too, um, a lot of times I don't make them come up necessarily on that, but you can. So she's at eight right there. And then if I, I could add another inch for it to come up on the lateral side. Okay. And then her B is the <coughs> electronon to the DPC. So electronon up to the owners because her forearm's in neutral. Good. And so I have her to her DPC is 11 inches. So I'm going to go up to my board up here. And I'm going to go, what's the first one I say? Eight and a half. Yeah. So I just added a half. So that's my A. And then from the electronon to the DPC was 11. Okay, so that's the length of my splint. All right, so now we are going to do A, and this one right there is my B. So now we have the upper arm. We're going to do the circumference of the upper arm. So some more of the um, proximal part of the upper arm. And I got 11 inches. So two thirds of that. So I multiplied it 0. 0.67 and we got, um, I already did this, 7.4. Okay. So. 7.4, just the length of that. So. Hope nobody has bigger biceps than me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> 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 how do you know where to like put them? Because like, depending on where you like measure, like how do you know where to put it on the splint? Like, do you need to measure where you took it from? You know what I'm saying? Like from the electron mm -hmm. to there. Mm -hmm. But you didn't do that. No, no, like when you took the measurement of like the mid of the, of the, the circumference. Yeah, but you need to know where from the electron you took it from. No. It doesn't have to be that. We're just gonna, you know, what you're you're gonna make your this, and then you're gonna put it on yeah. your um, person. So then you can make real small uh, corrections. Kind of <laughs> as long as you eyeball it. Yeah. So you're going to just go the most, like probably the biggest part of the upper arm is what you're gonna go around. So this close to the arm. Yeah. And with that two thirds calculation, mm -hmm. you can use a calculator? Yeah. Okay. We're <laughs> <laughs> not there yet, Matt. That's why I'm like, you know, this is very detailed. Most of the time you can just round. Okay. But for this purpose, it will be an exact. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to do two thirds the elbow, and you're going to do it in a splinting position. Good. And I got nine and a half. So then two thirds of that is 6.4. So here's my elbow position, right? Right where the electron is, where it meets. What did I say? Six and a half? Okay. Good. So I'm eyeballing that. There. There. And once again, your make this is just your little um, your draft, and you're going to hold it up after you make this. And then you have your mid forearm. <coughs> Just in the mid of that forearm, halfway up. Good. And I got eight, two thirds, 5.4. So then your mid forearm here, so midway here. Did I say 5.4? 5 .4. 5 .4. Okay. So, and then you go to the DPC. That's when you got to know your what your um, your creases are. Good, and I got seven, so um, two thirds that is 4.7. So then at the very end, we're going to be 4.7. So then you're just going to connect this. Connect the dots. Yeah. Pretty easy pattern to. Make. Any questions about that? Okay.
So then we're going to remove this so I don't get water everywhere. Okay, so then I'm going to, this is a good time to practice your long um, cutting strokes so it's not jagged. So even though it's paper, I'm going to practice cutting the way I would a splint. So once you get to where you know how you should cut, then you can practice with stuff here. So nice long cuts. And the more exact you are, whenever you are making these patterns, the better. So you can see how I'm kind of lying it down like this. This is how you're, when you're cutting it, you're actually going to be having it. Because if you are holding it, what's going to happen to that splint material? Right? So it's nice and supported by the table. And then I'm just getting rid of my pieces that I don't need. So that it doesn't get caught and stick to. definitely want to remove any excess off of your area because many a student has been frustrated by little pieces getting stuck to material. Especially when you're getting graded. Kind of stinks. Okay. So, even on my um, pattern, I swear that blinks from my head all the time. Even on my pattern, look at my edges, look at my corners. Are they sharp? Nice and rounded. Okay, so now I'm going to position my patient. Good. Okay. So I know I've got to be at least to the DPC. Good. And at least three quarters. Two thirds. So the biggest thing is it has to be half with your elbow splints. It has to be at least half the circumference, and it can't be like coming up over the splint. So if you're in between those two, you're in good shape. And then make sure that you're clearing of the armpit, and that it can be on the lateral side. It can come up a little bit higher. Okay. So I made my pattern pretty darn good. So I don't have to make any adjustments. But that's a good way. And whenever you are like, hey, come look at this, we'll be able to tell you, oh, look at this. Look at this area. Trim this up a little bit. Ooh, that's way too long. Because if it's way too long when you do that, when the actual splint material, um, whenever you heat up the actual splint material, it's going to be a lot too much, not just a little. Go ahead. So I'm a little confused because the measurement at what C would be of the upper arm is two-thirds circumference. I don't know, you said something about what should be at the circumference? On my lecture? No, you just said it just uh, yeah. Oh, I said if between half, it, okay, if it's more than half and not over the arm. Okay. Not over two thirds. So I'm saying, between half in real two practice, it has got to be at least half. Okay. Or it has to be in between half and from over. So in between those two things is a good eyeball on two thirds. Okay? And a lot of times I make mine right around half, too. <coughs> the book says two-thirds, but... Every um, other split you're going to do is going to be half. Gonna be half. half. Yeah. Um, so it's not like I'm going to get the measuring you know, tool out. So when you're eyeballing it, is it more than half, and is it not overlapping where it's sticking up? Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so now I'm going to draw my pattern. Ooh, and I'm really thinking <coughs> I'm going to make myself... Should I just use half? Okay, so I'm going to cut mine just a little bit short, but honestly, once I, use, once I get it on her, it might actually be long enough um, in the axilla area. Okay, so once again, whenever we are doing this, you want to use up as much of that paper as possible. So I'm actually going to use the side of the splint, which is great because it's already a nice and smooth cut, right? So I'm going to put one side of my splint right up against that side. On the top and the bottom, too, actually. Okay, and then I'm going to draw my design. 
and you don't want your paper towel to move. If it does, then you need to get it all lined up again. Good, and then round it up. So I know I need to round that corner, and round that corner. Oh, you know what I forgot? Facto knife. <laughs> okay, so patterns. And you guys honestly might want to keep your patterns, so whenever you are doing your practice and stuff, you have something to refer back to. Because if you like, have a question about forming it, I'm like, okay, where's your pattern at? So I would probably just keep them. Okay. Yeah, I'm probably just, this is what you don't want to do to your splinting scissors. So we're going to have, so there is my pattern. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> can you see it? No. no. Okay. So it is with the, you guys will see with the yellow crown. So what we would do in lab is we have an X-Acto knife and we will show you guys how to properly cut with an X-Acto knife. I'm going to ruin my scissors. No, it doesn't really ruin them, but it's terrible for your hands. Um, so, you should not do this. <laughs> I'm going to use CMCLA by the time I'm 50. <laughs> And it's terrible for your scissors, but okay. So you see how I'm pretty close to my line there, and I'm making a good use of my material. All right. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting in my split material, and I'm not going to let it get like form all the way. I'm just going to get it pretty soft so that I can um, cut my pattern out. And usually when you're doing this, um, you're not right in front of your patient, <laughs> you know, so. so I'm just getting it soft enough so I can easily cut. And how do you know when it's soft How do I know? Yeah, it gets kind of like when my dad cooks. He goes, you know, just when it's ready. I'm like, no, I don't just know that. <laughs> um, so it's pretty soft, and this is whenever it's nice that the, um, you have your um, splinting assistant. Um, but it's not where it is overly, um, you'll just know. <laughs> <laughs> and these are a little bit more difficult because you have to get them at two different times because our hands are not big enough to, so I'm rounding my corner, nice, smooth. So you can see with that, just cutting it, how smooth it is, that's probably not going to be the first time you cut it out, but that's your goal because then you don't have to, um, Fix your edges as much. And then I'm going to put the other hard packed in. You got to be careful when you do this because you can see how I'm already making it mold a little bit. Can you hand me a paper towel? Show you a little trick that before I um, form it on her, what I'll do. Woo! So I'm rounding that corner, so I got to really cheat on this because I used the already um, the side of the actual um, splint material. Okay, so I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to try to be just on the inside of my yellow line, so I don't have marks on my splint for cutesis. Okay, perfect. So that is pretty much ready to go in. I'll show you where I stopped cutting. Can you see? Right there. So that's why when you're cutting, you want to make it as um, nice, smooth cuts and not ever really pick up your scissors. And just keep on having nice, smooth cuts. All right, so I'm going to put this here for right now while I get Julia um, positioned. All right. So I'm going to have her get on the table. <laughs> Yeah, I'll just move up actually. Model, but when it's a 
person that just got their cast off and they haven't had to activate any of their muscles for four months, that's whenever um, somebody's other hands comes in handy. Even if they don't know what they're doing, just hold this arm up because it gets kind of tired to hold up there. So I'm positioning her in 90 degrees of flexion and her forearms in neutral. Okay? All right, so I'm going to position her and I'm going to put my splint material in. So I am going, and then this is what the, um, so then she's probably going to relax by the time I get back in the room. So I'm going to put the paper towel don't need that much. in between so I can put this in also so it doesn't touch. You guys get that? Oh. Got it, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That way you don't have to wait on both of those. So I'm going to start at her DPC because especially with our material, we know that that's where we have to at least start from. And then everything else is just going to kind of, gravity is going to um, take it down. Okay. So first when it comes out of the water, it's going to be pretty hot. So you're going to want to dry it off. And you kind of test it on your own skin. If it's too hot for you, you know it's going to be too hot once you put it on your patient. All right. Let me know if it's too hot. All right. So I'm going to start right about as you can see. No, my, hot, my water is way too hot. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. So here I we go. I'm screaming, but I. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there's our DPC. Good. And I have nice, soft hands. I'm not overly, you okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just kind of letting gravity go here. I'm making sure that I have at least three quarters to splint. I know it's hot. <laughs> My water's too hot. And then I'm going to fold. This is when it's nice when you have stock net because they don't feel all that temperature. Now this is where I'm doming for the lateral epicondyles and a little bit for that olecranon. And then I go back to my DPC. Everything wants to move. Good, and then I'm gonna come back and make sure I have my 90 degrees. This part's pretty easy because gravity is literally just hanging that down. Okay. You doing okay? Mm -hmm. So now I'm just kind of monitoring it as I can here while it's hardening. So I fold it because that's how she does in the book, but a lot of times I will pinch together and trim off. And you can see right there wherever I was kind of holding it in place, so I need to go in and fold that back out so there's not pressure there. Okay. Bubble out again where I know there's going to be pressure. They're at 90. So this whole time, it's slowly hardening up. But you see that I'm not sitting down and I'm constantly moving my hands because it's going to it's gonna try to see how it's trying to shrink up a little bit and I had to make sure I pulled it back down because that memory, it wants to come back to that original form. So then you'll feel it whenever it starts to get hard again. And if you're the patient, you desperately want to help, but you mm -hmm. can't. <laughs> and this is when you can get that goni out and really try to get that 90 degrees. So 
now we're going to take it off here for a second, let it break, and then we're going to go right back up to it. <coughs> All right, so make sure that the elbow's in there before you make any marks. So I'm going to look here, and I'm three quarters, three quarters. Here I'm going up just a little bit too much. I'm going to trim that down, and then I have to get that whole thinar area open so that she can move her thumb. So I mark with my crayon because it's good here in the corner. And then it's a little bit less and a little less. And then we're come back to this side. I'm not, I, she, her DPC is cleared. And then I'm gonna look here and we're gonna go two thirds of her arm where I'm gonna trim it up. And I probably have her about 80 degrees. Good, and then I'm good on this. And I've already flared there. And that's still kind of soft in that area. So you have time, but you really go down to those bony prominences and bubble it out a little bit. And then I'm two thirds here. And then I'm going to round that corner. And then I'm two thirds there, and it looks pretty good. Okay. Now, she's going to get to relax. If I've not taken too long, I will be able to cut all my material. Um, no. Sometimes, if, it, if you um, take too long, which I about took too long, um, you're going to have to put it back in and soften it up just a little bit. Because now I'm going to have jagged edges. So that's what's good about having a perfect pattern. Which even when you have a good pattern, it just happens. There's a lot to position with this type of splint, and you have to work with gravity, so you almost always have to cut it down or fix it a little bit. Put it back in the water if mm -hmm. you need to. And then, so if I'm going to soften it up and want to be good on my scissors in hand, dip it, get it soft, and then you're going to get a cleaner cut. So all my corners are rounded. Okay, so now I'm going to hold it back up to her and look at it again. Okay, so once again, you want to make sure that elbow portion's in there. Good. So I am an inch from her armpit. Good. I am two-thirds the length of her um, upper arm, two-thirds, two-thirds. We're going to have to probably bubble that out a little bit there. Up. Okay, there we go. Sorry. Okay. So there she is. So I'm good there. So one of the straps is going to be upper arm. One's going to be right on the top here. So I'm two thirds there. Good. I'm down to the DPC. It's cleared. Her thin arm crease is cleared. And then we've got two thirds the circumference on this side. So then I'm going to go back. Yeah. Okay. So I see a little bit of area where it's kind of impinging on her skin in there. Probably from like whenever I put a thumbprint or something like that in there. So I'm just going to go in there and kind of pull it out. And you can honestly sometimes just dip it a little bit in your water so it's nice and full. Give it a couple of dips. And then I'm going to just pull it off my thumb a little bit like that. Okay. And then I'm going to go back to her.
that's what's nice when you have StockNet on, because I kind of pinch her sometimes when I go in there. So I always have StockNet whenever I make these on my patients. Okay. So, I have, that's where I'm going to go with that splint. I'm not going to make any more corrections. I'm going to see what I actually got her at. Not 90, but... So you can feel a difference when you get a splint that people haven't done this to, whenever the person's wearing it, um, compared to, you know, it doesn't take that much time to actually go back and do this. Um, it makes a big difference, though, with the compliance and it being comfortable for that <coughs> Okay, and then I'm going to do the exact same thing on here, no straight edges, no sharp corners. Okay, and then I'm going to always run my finger down, make sure I'm not not really look at it, just always go by the feel, how it feels. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my patient one more time before I put the um, splinting material on. <laughs> And then I'm going to take some material, and I'm actually going to have it with me so I know the length that I want and where I want to put my um, strap. All right, so I know I want an upper arm one. All right, so I know I want an upper arm one. So I'm going to get the top here. So now I know where I'm going to mark that I'm going to put my Velcro pieces. So there's one. So I have one on 
the upper arm. Sometimes you can have, especially if it's a larger patient, you can kind of do a, a crisscross here on the side to really keep that um, on good. But we're going to do one on the proximal part of the forearm. So you see if I would mark this without having it on her, how it wouldn't be as accurate. And then we're going to do the distal wrist, distal forearm, sorry. do a small one from her straps nice and rounded and sometimes I even cut there's a sh kind of a sharp side on them so depending on um, the patient how much you're going to wear sometimes I cut that down if it's cutting into their skin at all okay. get my velcro pieces Here is my um, hook. So I know I have two big pieces on the top, and then two on the upper forearm, and then two on the distal forearm, and then two smaller ones on the hand portion. So I, even with these, you're going to round your corners It's going to stay on better, it's going to adhere better, and it's not going to get, corners aren't going to get caught. That's why it's important and it looks nicer. <coughs> and that's one of the grading points. Rounded, strapping, and it's all covered. They're my two babies. And I kind of push them on good though so they stay. Because they do like to come off. And then we 
two baby ones. Yeah. And then, like I said, I always heat them up. I'm just doing this for time. I'll usually put my straps on on the inside, make sure that it covers that whole area. So then I'm going to go back and trim. You don't want it cutting into the skin at all. Just nice and smooth the whole way. And then on the thumb piece, sometimes you have to make a little bit of a um, curve for the thumb so it doesn't get pinched. There. So then it's not going to cut in her crease at all there. Yeah. 